So yeah, hello. Uh, my name is Donal. Um, technically, I'm just going to do 10 slides. Uh, I'm very glad to be back in WLPC. Um, but one of my problems is I'm quite grumpy with the state of hiring in our industry and also in many other industries. So the title of, my, I guess, my talk is Verifying Candidates' uh, Wireless Skills. Now, I don't have all the answers for this, so this is kind of like a work in progress where I'm actually going to canvas some feedback from, from everyone here. Uh, okay, so five quick topics, a quick intro. I'm going to describe the problem as I see it. Again, this is just my opinion. Uh, the history of the problem as I see it, or as I've experienced it. Um, I had an idea. It's not nothing totally innovative or new, um, but I decided to go out and basically build something, design something. I'm going to demo it if I have time, um, and I'd like to leave a little bit of time just to do some uh, questions or suggestions. So uh, you can find me on Twitter as IRL Dexter, but does anyone know what this animal is? The honey badger. I didn't think so many people would know it. Um, so the honey badger is fearless. And one of the things that I decided I was going to try and do was uh, be fearless and pivot quite uh, far down the road in my career into web development. Um, so I've actually spent the last four months, I quit my job in April, uh, delved into web app development. I've been building something out in uh, Ruby on Rails which is probably a, a nice MVC framework or model view controller framework to get stuck into uh, to solve the problem that I was having. Uh, so what is the problem? So again, my opinion, as, as I see it, hiring itself is a very expensive endeavor, um, especially when you get it wrong. A lot of the time, if you're dealing with either third parties or even in-house, screening, filtering, and sorting applicants to candidates is very time consuming. Uh, it's expensive in other people's time. It's expensive in terms of resources. Uh, and recruiting itself is actually subject to a huge amount of bias based upon the people who are doing it. Um, certification is great, but what is it actually proof of? It's, it's point in time proof of something. What is that something? Uh, and few organizations that I've dealt with will actually test or assess people's skills, uh, be it via labs or simulations. And a lot of it is just done via questions or relationships, um, whiteboarding if you're lucky. So that's kind of like the high level problem. Uh, my history, I've been in quite a few roles in quite a few organizations. Um, I've also built teams and built communities. Uh, and, you know, been involved in mentoring, been involved in training. So I kind of did a very sort of short excerpt here of, of my background. Um, but one of the things is I've kind of played a little bit in everything from multinationals to telcos. Uh, I've been in sort of uh, service providers, um, you know, system integrators. Uh, I've also been a business owner. So I've kind of been involved in both hiring and interviewing people, but also I've been interviewed and or uh, luckily hired in a, a quite a few scenarios. Only ever once in about 15 plus years have I been given a lab to do before I actually got the job to validate my skills. Only once have I ever had a psychometric test, and that was for a bank. Uh, I passed and did get the job, so everyone's safe. Um, so my idea, again, is nothing new, but I actually wanted applicants. I wanted to get from applicants to candidates faster and better. Um, and this idea of simulation-based hiring, I actually wanted people to demonstrate their skills at a point in time. I didn't want to have to like, you know, elicit answers or ask them technical questions. I also wanted a multidisciplinary approach. Um, one of the things you're going to find, obviously, we've spoken today about the wired network. We've spoken about wireless networks. I mean, hey, give me a generalist. I want someone that can do BGP, DNS. I want someone who understands, you know, 802.11. I want someone who does X, Y, and Z. But not a lot of people uh, or not a lot of systems are able to actually test for that. Or another problem that people have is you may not actually have the skills in-house. So it's very hard to hire for skills that you don't have because you don't know what you're hiring for. So a lot of the time, people will go out to, say, recruitment uh, agencies and use them as uh, sourcers. Um, but they don't have the skills themselves. So 
maybe it's a little bit selfish, but I kind of just want to sit down with people and assess them on their soft skills, their communication, their collaboration. I love doing whiteboarding with people, you know, doing designs. You can tell a lot about their presentation skills and how they communicate. I didn't want to have to go back and test people's hard skills. Like, to me, it's a given. Like, you shouldn't be talking to me or talking to my team or talking to us if you don't have the requisite skill set. So, our time is expensive. Uh, let me tell you about designs. Uh, delving into web development, I was going to, I should have a laser pointer or something. I'm probably going to break the, the rule here. But I decided if I was going to build something out as a web app, um, I guess as an engineer and architect, I was going to uh, build something that would scale. So, everything from uh, CDNs on the front end to a development environment and a prod environment um, to database choice to labs on the back end. Oh, you're gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed. I'll switch hands. Um, I decided to build a platform, uh, and then I suddenly realized the platform was going to be aimed at clients. Uh, there needed to be an, uh, an applicant or a practitioner environment, and there needed to be an admin environment. Um, I built out sort of dev, prod, um, back-end labs, and this is what I'm going to show you a little bit of. One of the nice things is there's so much virtualization going on that you can virtualize a lot of uh, infrastructure and architecture into labs. Uh, you can also make heterogeneous labs where you've got multiple different vendors or multiple different environments that you can then test different skills on. I'm just looking at the timer. It's going pretty fast. Okay. So one of the things I realized very quickly was there, it's, it's quite easy to virtualize a lot of the wired stuff, be it like IOS, uh, Juni stuff be a Cumulus, um, you can even virtualize Cisco uh, wireless controllers. But how do you do it for lots and lots of wireless clients? Y you can't just bypass the physics. Like You've got to bring RF back into the equation somehow. Involved in um, uh, building out you know, data models. Everything in green I've kind of built thus far, but I've still, I still work in progress. Um, People talk about full stack engineers. I suddenly realized I had to do a lot of design. I wanted to do some of the stuff myself so that I could then knew what, what I was going to do in terms of hiring contractors. Rather, I didn't want to be one of those people that you know, had the wool pulled over their eyes. Um, so I decided I was going to just copy uh, the infrastructure as a service provider's UI, uh, but realized that that was expensive to do in terms of uh, customizing all the things. So. Use frameworks and customize, um, and let's have a very quick look at what it is I'm actually talking about. Um, hopefully, so one the, I didn't realize we were going to be VGA in a small res screen, so I'm lucky that Bootstrap has kind of reorientated some of the stuff. So this is like a client um, environment or client interface, which would be for recruiters or internal hiring teams. Um, basically, you have a requisition or you have like a job description, uh, which you would set up, you could be hiring for an internal company if you're an internal team, or you could be hiring for an external company if you're a recruiter. And the idea was to abstract some of the classifications or categorizations into the system so that you could categorize the role, number one. You could also put in the position description, and basic skills matching is not a very, very hard thing to do. But when you get into things like simulations, or what I call simulations, I really just wanted a recruiter or recruiting team to be able to sort of drag and drop skills into desirable skills, or let's take something, jokingly, empathy into fundamental skills. So I can't test yet for soft skills or psychometrics. It's still a hard skills platform. Um, but the idea was that your hiring team just had to know the skill sets that were required, and they'd also be time boxed. You would then uh, send out this essentially lab or assessment to the applicants um, and they would then complete within a certain time frame uh, and you would have like uh, you would score them or you would assess them based upon the skills so this is still a work in, in progress um, this is kind of like one interface uh, which would be for the client side uh, let me just go back a second keep going uh, I'm just going to show you the admin environment very, very quickly. Um, I'm still working on the, the front-end applicant uh, or practitioner-based environment. But the idea would be to actually be able to go and 
connect into an environment, uh, which would be a console. Um, let me let me come back to one of the existing questions, actually. Okay. I'm actually having an issue with WebSockets, but this is what happens when you've got a, a work in progress. Um, you basically write a question, and then you have a multiple choice environment, but you actually console into a lab or into a virtual lab, and real time have to interrogate the lab for the answer to the question that you were having. Um, there's other platforms out there that can kind of do this in terms of codes. Uh, things like HackerRank is one of them. I don't know if you're aware of HackerRank, but it's very specifically for software. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build this for infrastructure that has more deterministic outcomes in terms of questions and answers. Uh, so one of the things I would throw out there to the community would be if you were testing for a wireless skill set, apart from going into a controller and looking at the config elements or asking someone to, to pull out stanzas of code or you know IPs or settings, how would you test for a large scale simulation or an environment? Maybe you could do packet captures, uh, maybe you could term serve into a remote desktop. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave you with that concept uh, or that question is how would you test uh, wireless at scale? Which is kind of comes back to the earlier uh, question around testing and validation, but more so from a skills perspective. Um, so that's almost it. Let me just go back to the beginning of Prezo. Uh, I'm going to just, I think I'm over by about a minute or so. So I'm just going to throw it out to you. If, I mean, if you don't have time, to maybe come chat to me at some point in time or maybe email feedback, uh, feedback at Candidate. Uh, has anyone got any questions? Or how would you like to, to test a potential new recruit? Is there a way you could uh, have a whiteboard that you'd normally simulate with a one-on-one -on -one conversation and have all the parts and have them just rearrange them into a working network? Yeah, pr pretty easy, I think, with Canvas and just some different in the DOM and some different elements. So you mean like an already represented network where you're dragging and dropping shapes that yeah, represent I, I would different like things? I would like to watch them do it. Yep. So you could so, record that and so play it back? record that to see how what's their thought process. That's what you do when you're live. Yep. But, but you could capture that process and then let me watch how they, what was their, did they build a structure first before they drug the pieces over or was it random? How was, how'd they do that? Yeah, so you do like a 30 second abstracted whiteboard, ask a question, and then record that and play it back. Yeah. Yeah. 